Hello. Happy Sunday. It is good to see you all. I'm so happy that you're here with us. I hear it's your birthday today. Is it your birthday, Gene? Let's sing happy birthday to Gene. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gene. Happy birthday to you. All right. Enjoy. I hate when they do that to me. Oh, it drives me crazy, but I'm so happy that you're with us. So a few announcements before we begin. First, today is World Communion Sunday, uh, which is celebrated by several denominations in the spirit of Christian unity and ecumenism. ecumenism. And, uh, and so today we keep that in our hearts and in our spirit uh, today. And we just continue to pray for that one day when we'll all be in communion uh, um, together. Another thing is I want to just say I had a, we had a great time at our bus trip uh, this past week to the congregation to uh, Ferrith Israel Synagogue. Uh, Rabbi Alex Braver was just amazing. He was so, so amazing, so gracious, so much hospitality, so informative. Um, I want to thank everyone who came. We had 34 uh, residents who attended, and I thought it was just really, really uh, just a wonderful experience, so thank you for that. Um, again, as you know, this week, as I've mentioned before, um, this week is Active Aging Week, and on Tuesday at 11, I will deliver a talk uh, from Ozzy and Harriet to nuns, N-O-N-E-S, uh, and everything in between, right? And so I'll look at uh, American religion and how it's changed and evolved from the 1950s uh, to now. So that'll be really thought provoking and interesting um, and a lot of fun. So if you can be here, that would be great. And also, we are beginning a new Bible study series on beginning Tuesday, October 17th. Did, did I, did, are there, is there anything in the, yeah, oh, good, good, yeah. So that's the book. We're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to follow that booklet. Um, it's 12 sessions. If you don't need to buy it, if you want to just attend, that's great. If you'd like to buy it, you can get it on Amazon. I think it's like $9 uh, or so. So if you'd like to have your own copy, by all means, pick one up. But you don't need to have that. And we'll start that Tuesday, October 17th. Um, before I begin, before I introduce our uh, preacher for today, are there any other announcements? Yes. This is Active Aging Week, and we all, Spiritual Care always has the Dublin Food Pantry bins. They are outside the front entrance, a big sign that says Dublin Food Pantry. Two large bins, please fill them up if you'd like to do a monetary donation. Instead, they can get, for every dollar that we give, they can get $9 worth of food. So think about that as well. And the girls at the front desk will take your checks and put the food in the bins. Thank you. If you have any specific questions, Lois is, is leading uh, this, so feel free to follow up with her after the service. Thank you. Any other announcements before we begin? No, I am so happy to have Pastor Beth Gettert here. Pastor Beth is the pastor of Zion United Church of Christ, which is where I'm a member of. Uh, she is my pastor. She is my mother confessor. She is my uh, spiritual director and colleague and friend. She is so, I can't say enough about Pastor Beth, who's just such an important part of my life, um, and yeah, so when I moved from Lima to Delaware, um, I found her and the church, and I said, I need to reach out, and she's just been just wonderful uh, to me. So uh, professionally, personally, in terms of the ordination process and everything in between. So I'm so happy you are here. Amen. Well, let us worship God.
Our call to worship is from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. <clears throat> Please join with me in our opening prayer. Holy God, all lives are yours and you do not seek the death of any sinner. Renew our hearts, refresh our spirits, and help us walk in your holy way. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And please join in singing hymn number 13, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Please join me in our prayer of confession. <coughs> Righteous God, we confess that we have not lived as your obedient children. Forgive us our arrogance, awaken our hearts to sincere repentance, and enable us to will and to work for your good pleasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let's pause for a moment of silent prayer. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us share with each other the peace of Christ.
What should we pray for today? Yes. What's your sister's name, Patricia? Alice. Alice? For Patricia's sister, Alice. What? A, yes. Uh, we've been praying for my son, Philip, with lymphoma. Yes. And he got a clean bill of health, and he just went back again after another two months, and he has a complete bill of health. Excellent. Amen. So, Philip. So far, so good. Excellent. Thank you. What else? Mary Jo Edwards. Mary Jo. Ah, yeah, sorry. The New Yorkers are going to hear us. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yes. For Joe Schindler from the Flat Region, Ohio Health Rehab for serious physical therapy for his Parkinson's and recover from the infection. For Joe. Thank you. And yes. People of the Ukraine. The people in the Ukraine. Thank you. For Ruth Foster. Anything in specific? Continued prayers? Continued healing. Thank you. All right, let us pray. Father, we begin as we begin all things <clears throat> by giving you thanks and praise. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. And we thank you especially for your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, on this World Communion Sunday, we lift up these prayers for our world. God, you have placed a desire for truth and righteousness in the hearts of all people. Uplift those who seek to live faithfully and lovingly by the promptings of your spirit. Even those who do not know your name, save them from despair and lead them to the fullness of salvation. God, you call the children of Israel to make known your righteousness, and you call disciples of Jesus to take the good news of your salvation to all the nations. Help those who know your name to be faithful to their calling, to live according to your commandments, and to testify to your abounding love. God, you have formed your people into communities of prayer and service. Strengthen the leaders of our church and our churches. Give them humble and obedient hearts after the example of Christ, who humbled himself in obedience to you. God, you have placed in human hearts a hunger to understand the structures and rhythms of creation. Grant wisdom to those who seek to comprehend the inner workings of the world save them from arrogance and enable them to work for the flourishing of humankind. God, you fill the world with forms that delight the ear and the eye. Give artists and musicians a vision of your transcendent beauty and grant them skill to render their vision in tangible ways the manifest, that manifest the sublime glory of your creation. God, you establish the nations of the world to order human community, kindle love for peace among the nations and their leaders, save them from pride of wealth or power, and enable them to serve the common good. And God, you provided the earth as a garden, and you commanded the human community to till the land that it may be fruitful. Bless those called to work of agriculture. Give those who benefit from farming thankful hearts for this good work. Father, I lift up everyone here to you. You know what's on their heart. You know their needs, their desires, their pains, their joys, Lord. Bless them. Bless their family and friends. We pray for all the residents of Friendship Village, 
In a special way, we lift up our sisters and brothers in Alderwood, Rowan House, and Waterford. Father, we lift up all the associates. We ask you to bless them, and we thank you for the work that they do. Father, very specifically, we just lift up this active aging week, which is such an exciting time for us here. And we ask you to be with us in a special way as we celebrate our lives together. We pray for Alice. We pray for continued prayers of healing for her and a prayer of encouragement. We pray for uh, Joe as he continues to rehab regarding his Parkinson's, Lord, be with him in a special way. We lift up Ruth to you, Lord. Be with her during this time as she continues also in her healing process. Bless her, Lord. Lord, we pray for the people of New York City who are experiencing these terrible rain floods. Uh, be with them in a very special way, Lord. Lord, we pray for, um, we give thanks for Philip. We, we just lift up prayers of thanksgiving, and we thank you, Lord, for his uh, evolving recovery. We thank you for that. We pray for the people of the Ukraine, Lord. Make yourself presence there. We ask you, Lord, to make your presence known in all areas around the world where there is war and suffering and strife. Lord, we lift up the church to you, the church around the world, Lord. We ask you to give us humility when there is hubris, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to give us compassion, Lord. We ask you, we lift up the leaders of all the, of all the, the church around the world, Lord. Father, we thank you. We ask for prayers for our country, for our state. We lift up our leaders and we ask you to give them a spirit of wisdom and discernment, Lord, peace and compassion. So, Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you and the prayers that we keep silent in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Instead of reading the scripture and then having the sermon, uh, Pastor Beth is incorporating the scripture passage right into her sermon. Turn it on. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, I made a mistake. We sing our hymn now, right? Yes. Yes, okay. We will sing our hymn. You are correct. I'm just reading the bulletin, man. We do, do we sing the, yeah, the hymn before the sermon? Well, yeah, before yes. the sermon and after the scripture. So we're yeah, yeah, watching, yeah, yeah. Whatever. We'll sing the <laughs> hymn now. Let's sing. Yeah, we'll yeah. sing now. So join us singing, singing hymn 352, I'll Go Where You Want Me To Go, which is pretty apt, actually.
That is tall. Man, it's terrible when these guest preachers come in and mix up everything you usually do. It's just awful. I am pleased to be with you this afternoon. My name is Reverend Beth Getter. As Fred said, I pastor Zion United Church of Christ up in Delaware, Ohio. I'm ordained in the United Church of Christ and have served that particular congregation for six years. Fred is a very dear friend of mine. I'll tell you how good of a friend he is. When I went on sabbatical last summer, Fred was the church's sabbatical pastor. So Fred is a person with whom I would entrust the people that God has entrusted to me. I know he's a real blessing to you here. It's been a joy for me to get to watch him grow into his vocation. I feel like I'm standing in front of you. I'm going to scoot back a little bit. It's a joy to be with you this afternoon. On this Worldwide Communion Sunday, the highlight of our worship is the celebration of the Lord's Supper. But in order to prepare us for that, I want to invite you to think for a few minutes about what it is that we are called to do. Now, I realize there are a thousand ways to answer that question. There are as many ways to answer that question as there are individuals who follow Jesus because we all have a unique vocation. But as the gathered people of God together, there are some big ways that we can talk about our calling. One way is found at the very beginning of the story of Abraham and Sarah in Genesis chapter 12. So the first 11 chapters of Genesis are basically the origin stories of everybody. Stories that imagine how the world as we know it began Stories that describe some of the consistent weaknesses of humans, how we keep getting ourselves in trouble. The Noah story sets the stage for God's ongoing plan to deal with human evil without destroying humanity. Because God tried that with the flood and it didn't work. People were the same afterwards. But evil and violence must be addressed. And since God is not going to do that by acting on humans from the outside, God decides to address this problem of evil through humans, using humans as the solution. God decides to try to solve the problem from within the system. And so God chooses one human couple to be the beginning of a family that will lead God's resistance movement against evil. Let us listen in the reading of scripture for the word and the wisdom of God. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. Actually, you could come read this, or should I just do it since I'm here? Okay, I'll read it. (laughs) Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran, No one in this room knows anything about starting over somewhere new when you're older, so this story won't apply to you. (laughs) Abram took his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot and all the possessions they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired, so their household, in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. And when they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the Oak of Morah, And at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So Abram built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and A on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram continued on by stages to the Negeb. This is the word of God, which is for all people. Thanks be to God. Abram and Sarai, 
whose names God later changes to Abraham and Sarah, were blessed to be a blessing. The New Testament book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 9 says that all who believe are blessed with Abram who believed. Now that word believe in the New Testament is very cognitive for us, but it can also mean to trust. So everyone who trusts God is blessed along with Abraham and Sarah who also trusted God. This means that we too are blessed to be a blessing. That is one way to describe our calling. We are blessed to be a blessing, which is probably not news to you because you've probably been to church before. My congregation has heard this a lot. I'm pretty sure that I preach some version of this sermon every single fall which means they hear this a lot. I hope you have heard this a lot. It is fine with me to bring you a message you have heard before. I have absolutely no problem telling you over and over and over again that you are people who are blessed to be a blessing. That your identity as followers of Christ is that you are blessed to be a blessing. I hope that's a foundational way that you think about yourself in the world. You are blessed to be a blessing. What does that mean? As Americans, it is really easy for us to think about blessing as something related to money. The prosperity gospel, which teaches that the blessing of God is experienced in this life and in our material possessions, That idea is real strong in our country, in our culture, and in some other countries too. So if you don't have money, you aren't blessed. And if you're not blessed with lots of money, how are you supposed to be a blessing to others? Friends, that is a lie from the devil. Thank you. You can all feel free to say amen. First of all, the blessing of God is not measured in dollars and cents. It is not. There's a lot of folks with a lot of money who are not living according to the wisdom of the Bible. And there are a lot of folks who are loving and serving God and have very little when it comes to worldly wealth and power. Many religious lifestyles still include a vow of poverty and for good reason because we know that money is a trap for us. The blessing of God is not measured in dollars and cents. In 1937, Harvard began a study of successful living. So it was a longitudinal study following 268 individuals and then their spouses and then their children for over 70 years. You may have heard of this study. Charting those people's experiences and their perceptions of their experiences. And guess what the big takeaway is? Relationships are what matter most in life. Our health and happiness at the end of our lives is directly related to the warmth of our relationships. And I can sense the warmth of relationship in this room. There was another study that was released in March of this year, and it charted the responses of 1,000 Americans ranking which values in their life are important. Now, this same study was done 25 years ago, and there are some changes. Money is now ranked as more important than religion, community involvement, patriotism, and having children. That one came up as very important, more more than any of those other four, which 25 years ago was flipped. Am I explaining that well? Money is more important than religion, community involvement, patriotism, or having children. Money is more valued than those other things which are relational And yet, relationships are what really give our lives meaning. 
No wonder so many people feel so isolated and lonely. Our values are out of whack. Apparently as a country, but also individually. So if it's not money, what kind of blessings do you have? And are you blessing others with those blessings? Later in the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul gives a list of things that are evident in the lives of people who follow Jesus. We know them as the fruits of the Spirit. These are the blessings we have that are not monetary with which we can bless others. Love and joy. Peace in the midst of turmoil and patience. kindness and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. These are the qualities that grow in our life through the Holy Spirit. This is who we become as we follow Jesus ever more closely. These are the blessings we have with which God wants to bless the world. Those things are the qualities of God, which are the antidotes to strife and enmities and jealousy and envy and anger and quarrels and addictions and cynicism. God's resistance movement against evil is alive in us when we live like Jesus, like God, in the world as channels of God's goodness, living into God's blessing in our homes and in our businesses and in our schools and in our communities. So as we come to this communion table this morning, I believe God is asking us, what are you doing? Are we living out of a fear of scarcity? Are we telling ourselves we don't have enough to share? I don't have enough peace to share any peace with anybody else. I'm worried about my stuff. Can't worry about your stuff. Or are we paying attention to all of the many kinds of blessings that we have and finding ways to channel those blessings to others? This communion table is such a great example because it is big enough for everyone. I believe here it's open to everyone. Yes. So you are welcome to commune at this table this morning, regardless of your spiritual background or beliefs. This is our symbol of God's abundant blessing. We have no need to hoard at this table because in God's kingdom, there is always more than enough for everyone especially on this World Communion Sunday, we remember that this meal with Christ is also a meal of communion within Christ. The sharing of Christ through one bread and one cup in this one place connects us through Christ to everyone who shares bread and cup in Christ in all times and places. This is the mystery of this meal. Christ connects his church, his body, together, everywhere throughout history. Because the whole church, capital C, because of this truth, the whole church, capital C church, is involved in each local celebration. All of our Christian siblings around the world, whether we agree with them in terms of theology or politics, whether we agree with them or not, When we join with Christ at this meal and they join with Christ at this meal, we are all joined together. That's revolutionary, friends. That will change things. If we lived like that, if I lived like that, the whole church is involved in each local celebration. You do not commune this morning only with the people in this room. You are connected to your families who are not here. You're connected to your friends. 
You're connected to your loved ones who have gone to glory, who are part of the great cloud of witnesses. They are here with us in communion this morning. All of our Christian siblings around the world throughout time are present with us as we are present with Christ at this meal. Which is why we join our ancestors in the faith, insisting that this is the joyful feast of the people of God, where people of all ages, races, and sexes, people in every type of body, come from the north, south, east, and west, and are welcomed by Christ, the true host at this table. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is good and right and a joyful thing to give you thanks and praise always and everywhere, O God Almighty. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and for calling us to be your people. You sent us prophets and teachers to guide us on the journey. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life, who took on human form to live and die as one of us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who leads us into truth, defends us in adversity, and gathers us from every people to unite us in one holy church. Therefore, with the entire company of saints, in all places and all times, we praise you with joy, saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. We pray that the bread which we break and the juice that we drink may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into him, Christ our Lord. As this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf and these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, Take, drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread we eat and the cup we drink is the communion of the body and blood of Christ.
of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for us. The blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ. Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for us.
Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity of this holy meal. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, 342, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. <laughs>